What's up, everybody? It's Pastor G. I'm in the house once again. I am very excited as we move into this Christmas season 2016. I'm very excited about 2017, a year of incredible things. Now, I want to invite each of you to go to my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. You can find this video as well as all the other videos I've shared thus far. Now, I wanted to make this video because I feel very inspired. This next year, it's going to be a year of coming forth for those of you that you've been feeling the unction of God, the pulling of God, the, the call of God to come forth. Now, you might not have any other uh, uh, experience with the call of God and you, you you might not even know that it is the call of God. I'm here to tell you that it is. It's a calling and you're about to come forth. Get ready to be used by God. Now, some of you are just like me. People can't even identify who you are. And like they so many times call me, that's the sound guy. That's the studio guy. That's the musician. And they're not even aware that there's been a word of God that's been placed in your heart for such a time as this and God is requiring you to move forward at this season in this season 2017 is your year I'm here to tell you don't be ashamed don't be ashamed to declare his name and shout it on the mountain top now this is a very powerful time for you but here it is we got to make sure that our consecration and our dedication to God being in his word and living the lifestyle because what God is trying to do is going to require us to have a consecration. I know consecration is a word probably not heard a whole lot now, but this is what is required of us. Now, I was invited to a reunion service at my old church uh, a couple of weeks back, and I'm so excited because when I got to my old church, uh, I began to, I was invited into the pulpit. I think this is my first time back there as a pastor. I was so honored to to be there because I saw on the pulpit some of the people that was my greatest influences as a young boy. And as I sit there, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me. Now, there's some of you that the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to you as well. You didn't identify, you said, I felt. Uh, something and I just something just said something but well, that's the spirit of God leading you into your next thing so don't be ashamed next time it speaks just answer and say as, as the scripture say here I am Lord well as I was sitting there the spirit of the Lord spoke something to me this is why dedication and consecration is so important uh, it, the spirit began to tell me this is the reason why a lot of things that you could have gotten caught up in as an adult and you didn't because you were trained well as a young boy. I was taught how to be dedicated. I was taught how to be a service in the house of the Lord. Now, nowadays, sometimes we, we look down on that, that you a church boy or you just, you know, you just a sanctified boy or whatever they call you. But now I, I, I appreciate the, the bringing, the upbringing that I got as a young boy. And, 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 and so, the, so the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me, this is why now, by no means am I saying that I've been perfect my whole life. No, not in any stretch of your imagination or my imagination have been perfect. But a lot of things that I could have gotten caught up in, the Spirit began to tell me, this is why, because you were taught as a young boy to respect and to honor God and to have consecration, uh, fasting and prayer all the things that might elude us in this particular time but i got it as a young boy and it carried me all the way over until now and i'm so grateful to god for reminding me as i looked at the my, my former pastor that was there that taught me and, and taught me to be honest with god to always live the life before god I'm so appreciative as I as there, there again as I looked at all the ministers that were there that was so in that was so instrumental in in me coming up and then I began to think about something scripture began to come to my mind and I wanted to really share this especially as we move we, we, we discovered that the world is in dire need of a move of God but it seems that those that are called by his name 
are ashamed to come forth and to speak the language of God or to even mention his name or the doctrine has been so diluted that we right now don't really know what it is that we should be saying. And as I was sitting there in the book of Exodus, I, I, I love to study in scripture because I think the scripture if I if I break the word down, scripture is the script that paints the picture for life. If I want to see what life looks like, successful life, I have to go to the scripture so it can paint the picture of what it's supposed to be. And now I'm sitting there, I was uh, looking at the book of I was really led to uh, to think about the book of Exodus. And there's a passage of scripture in Exodus that we hear. So often time, you know that the children of Israel were God was God's chosen people, but they found themselves in bondage. They found themselves in calamities. They found themselves in in, in a, a chosen people handpicked by God, but now are being plundered, are in captivity, are in bondage to things. Now you know there are people that are chosen by God that find themselves in bondage that's just the truth and i think the church right now is finding themselves in a position of bondage and as i began to study that I, it became very clear the scripture began to open up to me and that we've we've heard this preached several times over and over again and the scripture says this that there was a pharaoh i think it's around the uh uh, the eighth verse it says now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph now as I begin to think about that and this is sometimes what we think that it's political there's political reasons why we are in the condition that we're in and the scripture says that there was a new king a new pharaoh a new political figure that came on the scene that knew not Joseph and so this was the cause of them being in bondage or them suffering many things and as I read that I could actually say well yeah 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 it, it is political because it's, it's kind of what we think now there's a new political figure so it suggests that we should are going to be in bondage as so many are saying right now but as I was reading that, the Spirit prompted me to go back and read a couple of a couple of verses ahead. Now let me read that to you. It says here, it says, And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Now that's when it opened up to me. And Joseph died, his brothers, and all that generation and here's what the spirit of the lord said to me it's not because of political figures that the chosen people are finding themselves in bondage it doesn't have anything to do with the new president or a new politician it has everything to do with joseph and all that generation being dead and gone now let me explain what Joseph represents in this scripture, he understood the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That was the connection. And he died, meaning the understanding, the dedication, the consecration of that generation did not pass over to this generation. Now, the scripture says very clearly that and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them. Here go a people that are multiplying. Here go a people that is fruitful. Here go a people that are mighty. So mighty that the king, the new king even recognized that they are mightier than us. So if they would just move on us they would have the ability to overtake but they are plundered by someone that is less than them and then that's when it the the bell begin to ring whenever we lose the dedication that we were taught whenever we disconnect from the 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 greats of our past that taught us consecration that taught us dedication that taught us lifestyle that taught us how to live even though we are fruitful and we have multiplied and we got many gifts 
as never before, we will be plundered by things that are less than us, things that we should be easily, things that we should easily be able to overcome. Now they become the thing that take us over. This is very powerful. This is why there must be a reconnect. A reconnect. Now, when I as I was as I was looking at the, the the ministers and the pastors that that taught me consecration and dedication. Now they are old now. A lot of them are, are struggling to get around. But the dedication, the consecration, the 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 seeking God that they had. Even though they're old, I've got to connect. I've got to understand that that's the thing that made God move for them. That's the thing that that got, got their prayers heard. That's the thing that God honored the most is their consecration. And just as in that day, it says Joseph and all that generation has died. This generation is putting to death all of the teachings of the past all of the dedications of the past now we talked so many times about how and we we know this without a doubt that god is as 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 uh, uh what is what is the word he's as innovative as any god is that but i think what we missed is when it comes to innovations in god god is not changing the consecration God is not changing our dedication. He still requires that. We've, we've said so many times that, you know, a lot of things that were in the past are not uh, valid now and don't need to be done like fasting and prayer. And, you know, those type things are, are you know, God has changed. He's, he's innovative now. But let me tell you what uh, the innovations in God is. Now, if I got a church and my members work all night and I want to change my service times to uh, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock to accommodate, then that's that's me modifying to, to actually give the people that have been working all night a chance to sleep and then come to church. But when I get to church, I got to render or before I get to church, I've got to have the same dedication, same consecration. Now, I might change the songs a bit. I might do a contemporary song if I so desire. I might do a, a traditional song if I so desire. That's that's fine. You can modify as needed. But when it comes to consecration, when it comes to dedication, when it comes to fasting and prayer, there's no changes there. That's still the thing that gets God's attention. Now, I hope, hope you hear me, especially the younger generation. There's a reconnect. There's a reconnect. The Bible says this in Jude that I must uh, earnestly contend, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And that's a very powerful scripture. And, and now let me break it down to you. It's, I must contend for the lifestyle. I must contend for the faith that they had, that they believed God. And there's a lot of teaching. There's a lot of, of, of different things going on. And, and, and the people that say it, they got um, very articulate. And they're, uh, some of it is, is damaging because it teaches me to believe so much in myself or self-confidence. Well, in this season, we don't really need self-confidence. We need supreme confidence. We need to depend on God and his supernatural power. I want to make that very clear. God and his super. See, uh, there's, there's people that teach just, just wait it out. You're going to, it's going to be all right. Just, just wait it out. Well, I'm here to tell you. In this season, I'm going to need a supernatural move from God. I need divine intervention. I don't want to depend on myself. I need to depend on God in this season. Now, this is very important. So we must earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, I think about it like this. My father-in-law, and I always make reference to him because I believe that he was a man that lived the life of God, Amen. And and it, uh, and I I go back to his church and, and 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 visit there. And I know that in my calling and what God has called me to do is different from what he his administration and how he administered. 
Now that's that's perfectly fine because God, as I said, he, he knows how to meet and where to meet people and he will give you innovate, innovative ways to speak to people. But when the scripture says I must earnestly contend for faith, it's just like you and your father. You know, the, the men of old were men that dedicated, they worked hard, they stayed on their job 35 years. Well, that's what they had to do and they were trained to work and work real hard. But now we know that we can get education and what my dad made, maybe he made $10 an hour and that was everything. But now with my education, $10 an hour would seem like little to me. So I don't want to, when I, I say we got to we gotta earnestly contend for the faith, I'm making an uh, illustration here. I don't want you to work the same job and make the same amount of money. No, you definitely want to find better jobs through innovation and through education. You want to be on a higher level. But what you should keep is your dad's dedication to the job, the hard work ethic that your dad had, the, the stick to it that he had and that's where we are as saints that we got to get we might modify a lot of things we might modify church times we might modify songs but the dedication from the past we it must return we must be dedicated and we must contend for that faith we must contend for the level of consecration that they had the level that if i gave you my word my word was my word i'm not trying to figure out another word how to change what I said. Now, this is very powerful. This is a season that there again, there's new forces that are about to come on the scene in this next year. But we're going to have to have consecration and dedication and discipline. It is a must. This is the requirement that we have this in. There's a lot of words that we are going to have to revisit again. Like one of the words is the word worship worship and just like a whole lot of other things in our in our experience we we changed the definition of different words that are very vital in our walk with god this is this word worship we're gonna have to re uh, uh look at this word worship because we're using it very loosely and we don't understand what god is saying and and, and, and as you study this stuff this is very vital and i make this point in, in worship, the first mention of worship was in Genesis, you know, the story of Abraham and Isaac. I believe in the law of first mention. Whatever's mentioned in scripture first sets a precedence for eternity in God. Once I find the meaning of it, I can go there and say this is how God is going to operate. And this word called uh, worship, we got to re-examine. Now, the word worship and what it exactly and what it means in scripture the Bible says that God tells Abraham to, to, to present his son. Now, long story short, what's so powerful here, this boy is the thing that Abraham has waited his whole life to get. He did not believe that he was going to be able to have a son, but God granted him that blessing. He had a son. Now, you know how he cherished this boy because this boy was the, the legacy character. He was going to have Abraham's legacy and all of the nations would be born through this boy. But here go God. He comes and he asks him for the thing that meant the most, the thing that he had waited his whole life for. But when God asked for it, he says, here it is. So, you know, the story, long story short, he takes him up to, he says, hold a mule to his servant while me and the boy go up to worship. Now, here is the definition of worship in scripture. Worship is the fact that the thing that I desired my whole life, the thing that I worked for, God, you finally blessed me with this. It means everything to me. But when you ask me for it back, I would willingly say, here it is. So here Abraham goes to worship, meaning he is about to make the ultimate sacrifice. He's about to give God what God asked for. Now, how is this different in my time than it's in that time now if if worship is me giving god the thing that mean the most to me it's very difficult to say i'm in worship if i won't give up my girlfriend it's difficult for me to say i'm in worship when i won't give up a habit when abraham gave up the thing that meant the most 
meant the most to him. But when I, I can't say I'm in worship without saying, God, I give up whatever you ask me for. I will give it up. If it's my girlfriend, I give it up. If it's my boyfriend, I'll give it up. If it's that man's wife, that woman's husband or a boy, if it's your boyfriend. How, worship is that God, if you say give it up, I give it up. This is when I come into the moment where so worship is a moment of sacrifice. Worship is that I will give up whatever it is that God. I, I know, I know we've been taught that it's a slow song. It's a, a, a way I look when I, I it's tears. No, worship is sacrifice. If I'm not willing to give up because it's not about me. You can't be in worship when it's all about me and all about what I do. And then I, then I make this uh, great uh, move in my voice when I was singing. That's not worship. It's about you giving up to be in the presence of God. There's things that we're gonna redefine. As we move into the season of dedication, as, as we move into the time of the church coming, back again god is allowing us to be uh, in the position of consecration the position of dedication again where people can look to us again as the men and women of god so there's some of you out there right now i want to say that before i leave get ready god is about to bring you to the forefront don't be ashamed don't be ashamed god will put you in places because you're obedient to his word that you could never get on on all of your work stop trying to make your name great he says he will make your name great stop trying to better your brand he says I, the branding is already there it's me work inside of that i need you to work inside the brand that is already from beginning to end that's God himself. So now is the season of dedication. I'm very excited because there's a move of God that's about to come for this next year and you are included in it. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready to come aside so that God can speak to you. Now, there's a lot that might debate this and say well, that's unnecessary stuff and that's all of that. Well, so be it. But for those of you that hear the voice of God, this is a time of consecration. You're about to give up some things to get better things. You are about to be in the presence of God like never before. And I'm excited about that. Yeah, this is the bass player talking. Yeah, this is the sound guy talking. This is the, the musician talking. But most of all, this is the man of God that's talking. It's our time. It's our season. Pastor G is out. Wonderful Christmas to you too.